We're back, we're back, we're back. We're back, we're back, we're back. Eh. We're back, we're back, we're back. Eh. We're back, we're back, we're back. All right, y'all, before we begin, is this thing on? Uh, yeah, it's on. Okay, so before we begin, be sure you comment. Well, no, hold on. Before we begin, be sure you click that subscribe button. I know I said we're on the road to 25K, but I believe I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can I get an amen? Amen. Jesus loves you. Go ahead and hit 100K. 100K by the end of the year? I think yes. I think yes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get straight into the video where we're going to watch PBS News, uh, PBS News Hour. They did a voters react to how Trump talks about race. Crossroads, a conversation with America. And I really want to watch this because it's a short clip, but it seems interesting. So I was like, why not watch it together? It's giving, it's giving intimate. Picking up what I'm putting down. All right, let's go ahead and begin. We believe that the media is telling just one side and um i've been to many of donald trump's rallies and i hear mm. it from his mouth and i'll hear a little bit on tv and it will be totally turned around and um in the in, news coverage. right in the news coverage and um i wanted to add too um for the first couple of years that trump was running um, we were actually mm. afraid for our lives, you know, um, to be able to put signs out in front of our house. I'm not gonna well, let me you. bring in her. Antoine Clark. I believe her with her story. Um, I'm not going to lie. In 2016, when Trump first became president, I cried. I sure did. I cried. I think I was like, I was 17, I believe. Yeah, because I couldn't vote in 2016. I know that for sure. But I was 17 years old. And no, I just turned 18 because I remember my birthday is November 12th. So 17 or 18. That's not the point of the story. But I remember crying because the way the media had it, the media literally had me thinking they gaslighted America. I thought we we're going back to slavery. I'm not even going to hold you. I was in the kitchen when I found out I started crying. I said, bro, this is scary. This is scary. Looking back, would I cry again if he became president? No, no. I think of media, they do an irresponsible job in I think it's one thing just to just report the news. You get what I'm saying? Like, don't be dramatic with it, because when you're calling him Hitler, you're putting unnecessary stress and fear into the American people. Like Donald Trump is a lot of things, but I'm here to tell you he is not going to become Hitler. Like if he has the capability of becoming a dictator or becoming Hitler, then that says more about the American system than it does about him. Like it's not even about him at that point. That just goes to show that Amer the American system, the due process is so fragile, so much so that that someone can come in and become a dictator so anytime i hear that i'm just like that doesn't have me questioning him it has me questioning our system that we're paying into like why is there why is that even an option but neither here or there i just think the way that media has just become it's either really really right or really really left there's there's no common like n no common ground no like logic anymore it's always feelings pushing an agenda and it does the disservice to the people that's why i love like when i watch like independent like youtubers who do their own research and, and they say their personal opinions but i just do a lot of like i just like a lot of independent media i still do watch obviously mainstream news here and there but yeah antoine you work for a nonprofit here you're a democrat when you hear uh, someone like penny saying she feels disrespected by the other side and she feels she's not getting i mean both sides your feel disrespected side isn't getting Penny. the whole story what does that make you think um i think personally um i am in fear of my life all the time as a black man and i think the issue i see is that when people in these conversations talk about race it's never necessarily viewed mm. with respect and so thinking that I, that a immigrant is trying to take my job as a college educated black man, I don't think that's true. Um, I don't think that to relate to me is to be a felon mm. because I am not a felon. And when you refer to people calling, talking about felons in the United States or mm -hmm. coming across the border, you're referring to comments by former President Trump? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah as a black man, the only thing that he tries to identify with is my struggle. Not me being a okay, parent, well, not me 
Okay, let's play this and then it's almost done anyway. <laughs> Being a person trying to work and pay bills and buy a home and things like that. He is trying to lean in the fact that he assumes that black people are felons, that he assumes that minorities operate in a deficit. And because of that, he rubs me the wrong way. Okay, so the problem that I have with that is I think that's selective outrage because although I think there's an, there's a selective outrage that goes on within the left that I see more often than the right. So when we have situations where someone like Antoine said that pretty much Antoine is saying that Donald Trump or the Republicans, they try to pull the negatives um, in order to relate to people that look like him. Um, but his feelings are valid for sure. But my thing is like, what do you think the left is doing as well? What do you think the left does? I think the left, this is why I always tell people when you put your feelings aside and you just see things for bigger than what they are, like beyond surface level, you really see the correlation. When I was putting my identity in Vote Blue No Matter Who or the Democratic Party, for those who don't know, at this point, I don't know how you don't know, but even though I'm a registered Democrat, I identify more as an independent at this point in my life, at this stage in life, I just go based on policy, not person. But something that I see that I notice um, within the left is that when you're willing to um, put your identity in your political party, it's almost like whoever is no one in that party can do no wrong because everything he just said that described Donald Trump, the left does the same thing, just just at a different angle. It's literally the same thing. It's almost like the left is like kind of they kind of like tease you like they tease you like, oh, you can have, like I don't know if y'all seen like with everything that's happened with the reparations in the state of California, the left has been pushing for years. They're going to give um, descendants of slaves um, reparations upon reparations. They had a chance to do it on a state level. They were teasing you, playing with your feelings. Where, what happened to the bill? Oh, okay. If y'all don't know, Gavin Newsom did not want it. I don't even think they, they didn't even hear the bill. They weren't. They were not having it. So it's almost like this selective outrage. Like the black community has a unnatural alliance, loyalty, and allegiance to the Democratic Party. I need everyone to take a step back and put their identity in Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Because when you do that, you just see truth. You see truth. You see things for what they are. Um, you see the lies that both sides have, but you maneuver differently. You maneuver differently. You maneuver in a way of trying to get a solution. Knowing both sides are imperfect, you just... It's almost like a switch turns on, but yeah. Let me know your thoughts on the comments down below. Do you think that the media plays a big part in the divisiveness? But let me know your thoughts on the comments down below. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Follow me on my social media. I love you all. God bless y'all. This is Uduak, connecting people with policy. Toodles! Oh,